Hi guys, it's morning and it is chemo round two and last night I had my meatloaf with liver in it because it's all about the iron, get that iron into your body, help your liver out and your immune system while you're on chemotherapy and I'm just, do you know what a good thing about this is that you don't have to worry about your hair? <laughs> Silly. Anyway, um, so I am just preparing my breakfast. So we have buttered lentils here and my famous pack of sardines, which are absolutely delicious, by the way. They are very delicious. I'm also having a banana, good for serotonin, and I think it was B12. These foods are extremely rich in B12 and help with iron inside your body. And also, I like to have prune juice because it helps with constipation. I haven't had it yet with chemotherapy and I'm trying to deter it. So I like to have prunes and I also like to eat three figs a day. And it's just these guys here, you regular Costco dried figs. So I just have three of these just to help so I don't have any constipation. They also recommend that you drink two litres of water before your chemo and also keep yourself di d keep yourself hydrated, dehydrated, keep yourself hydrated throughout the whole of your chemotherapy. So I am accustomed now to drinking water and I was never a water drinker before and now I am. So the water drinking obviously helps with the fend in the veins and also helps, it helps with the chemotherapy as well. So make sure you keep yourself hydrated and keep yourself hydrated all the way through your chemotherapy as well. I'm hoping to prevent any of the mouth sores that you can get while on chemotherapy. So I am constantly drinking water. Raisin bran is another good one because it has all of these vitamins in it. And ferramine is a very good to look out for. And look how much ferramine is in this raisin bran. So I'm going to run an experiment and see if eating like this one day before my chemotherapy actually helps me out. Last night I had the meatloaf with liver. Tonight I'm going to have the meatloaf with liver. Last night I had it with mashed potatoes and veggies. And tonight I'll probably have it with um, lentils and veggies. And these are all the medications that I actually have to have before my chemotherapy. So there's this one here and then this one over here. Oh, and this one here. So I have to double check that I'm taking all the right ones. This one here is for whenever I feel nausea. So I can have this when necessary. Then I have to write the times down of when I actually have them. So when the chemotherapy nurse, the oncologist or whatever they're called, um, gives me my medication, she'll ask me about whether I've taken these because these are what actually helps me to stop getting sick. And if I don't take these, then they actually will not give me my chemotherapy and I'll have to actually wait in the waiting room until I've had my medication and then they'll give it to me. Another thing that I do before my chemotherapy is I'm a bit of a neat freak when it comes to my house and I like it to be organised a certain way. So I'll go around and I will blitz the house the day before and like I'm not having my chemotherapy until one o'clock. So I've got all the morning to actually clean the house and it's actually great because it takes your mind off it. So I go around and I blitz the house and get it up to the standards that I want it. So the next four days I'm not freaking out over like ironing and stuff like that and cat litter trays and stuff. So it's all done ahead of time. Oh, and just to clarify, when I say cat litter trays, I mean actually physically clean them out. I don't mean just like I only ever empty them out once to the start of chemo. Not correct. I mean physically clean all the cat litters out. Take all the litter out, clean the trays, and then put all the cat litter back in it. If you're going through chemotherapy like I am right now, I can't stress enough about building up your resilience. Go on Google, figure out how to build your resilience up and it helps you to be super strong. So that's another piece of advice I want to share with you. At the end of the day, my husband has to go out and work and my friends all have other friends and they all have families and they all have their own lives. So honestly, you have to help yourself and heal yourself. And honestly, if you can help yourself, it goes a long way.
and unfortunately you're going through this nobody else is so you really have to work out how to be strong and resilient i wash all the towels i clean all the bathrooms out drink water am i creating an emphasis on drinking water i think i am I've washed my bedding and I'm now putting it back on the bed. Would you see what I'm doing here? I'm keeping myself busy. It is currently 8 o'clock in the morning. My chemotherapy is at 1pm and I am keeping, my busy, keeping myself busy. Sorry. And what is that doing? That is helping me to take my mind off things. I mean, what's the point in just sitting here, like tapping my fingers, waiting for my next chemotherapy? Go around and do whatever you need to do around your house or if you're working, get on with work and keep your mind off it. Now, what's that phrase that they say? Depression is where you live in the past and anxiety is when you live too much in the future. Now, I'm not in the past or in the future. I'm right here and right now at eight o'clock in the morning. I'm not at chemo, so I'm not worrying about it. This is today's number two chemotherapy outfit. I like to rock it when I go chemotherapy. I like to dress up. It makes me feel better and it makes me look good. Don't just want to go in t-shirt and jogging bottoms. I don't even own a pair of jogging bottoms if I'm honest. But this is my outfit today. So I've already drunk one of these. I need to drink like another two realistically. Put some lemon in it. I'm getting bored of just water. So I've cleaned the downstairs bathroom. I'm going to go upstairs and clean the two upstairs bathrooms. It is now nine o'clock and it's keeping me very, very busy. So it feels like it's going to be another hot day again. It was really hot the last time I had a chemo and it's going to be hot again today. So what I'm going to do is try and cool my bedroom down by shutting the blinds and shutting the curtains and trying to keep my bedroom cool. So if I decide that I want to be in the bedroom, I can be in the bedroom. I mean, there's a toilet and the ensuite right across the way. I think it's wise for me to do that because I get very unsteady on my feet and I get out of breath on my chemotherapy really easily. So I think it might might be a bedroom day for a few days rather than going downstairs in the basement even though I know it's so much more colder I'll see how I feel so I do really want to track my symptoms so much better for you guys this time I feel as though I didn't track it properly last time and I want to make sure that I can track it a bit better so I'm gonna try not to do lives and try to edit the video down so it's a bit more better information for you guys rather than having to watch a live and me trying to stumble and find, find my words. So um, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna try and track everything better. So my husband's just reminded me that I need to send him a shopping list of all the food groups that I want. So I need to go and do that now. So I need to go and get my little white book of all of my ingredients of my iron and my B12 fighty foods in order to have them all stocked up this time in my house. So these are all the foods that I wanna kind of make sure that I have. And these here. This is now water number three. So it's 9.30, I'm going to jump in the shower because I need to wash my towels now. Um, and I'm going to get my makeup on and probably put my outfit on for today. Oh, and the nurse also recommended that I started wiping my head with a damp flannel and help some of them loose hairs fall out of my head because sometimes they get a little bit itchy. So I'm going to do that and see if any more comes out. And yes, it is. Well, you can see it's all over my flannel. So it's definitely all coming out now. So I think a lot more came out and I'm so sick of this hair situation, like dragging me down. I don't know what is up with me. I feel as though like, like what, so what? Like I've got my health at the end of the day. Like, why am I so bothered about this stupid hair? Makes me angry. Makes me feel superficial. Stop it. Okay, so I put my moisturiser on my face first. And then I apply a bronzer on my cheeks and my chin and my nose and my forehead. So I don't actually put foundation on. I just put bronzer on. So this is my face before. Do you see how it just gives you a glow? Makes you feel, like, alive. <laughs> I put the eyeshadow on and don't stop there. Go ahead and put eyeliner on and mascara. It makes a huge difference. There you go. You see the difference? 
so much better. Another piece de resistance is my bright red lipstick. I really like this brand. I've loved it for many, many years. And this one dries matte so you don't have lipstick all over your teeth. So that is my face all done. Okay, so I'm going to put the rest of my towels in the wash and in the dryer. I just don't think they are going to be ready before I leave. It is now, I think, 10 o'clock. I'm going to iron this little patch of ironing right here. And then go to the washroom for like the fifth time. And also go and pay some bills off. I don't want to be forgetting about them and then worrying about that. So I'm going to get them paid. It's now 10.44, I'm going to take a little bit of a chill out and watch a bit of TV. Um, I have my friends swinging by at 12 o'clock and then I'm going to have to take my anti-nausea medication and then we're going to be off to the hospital. Oh, I need to feed the smitten kittens before I do that. So I'm going to take a bit of a 20 minute rest and then I'm going to get back up and feed my kittens. This is what the urine looks like right after chemotherapy, so it's bright red. After all that water drinking that I did and they couldn't find a a vein so it took them like like five tries to find a vein and I really don't like needles and it was a bit traumatic <laughs> but they actually did find one in the end and they managed to get all the chemo in but yeah it was a bit upsetting and they're also recommending that I should probably try and go for a port so if anybody out there has a port for chemotherapy could you leave it in the comments down below and let me know like how traumatic that is to have it inserted into you that would be great so I had my chemo and I finished my chemo at like 3 30 I think it was so I can go and have my immunity booster at about four o'clock tomorrow um and then I'm going to document how I'm feeling how I'm feeling right now is just that I'm just I don't know I'm just so frustrated about the fact that they couldn't find a, a vein and then any time that they were trying to put the needle in me it would just like it wouldn't go in and they were saying basically that over time sometimes your veins thicken with chemotherapy so that's obviously a little bit of a worry um and then with the port they can just pop it straight in because everything has all been connected to your vein already so um i don't know i need to have a think about that it's like it's like another thing isn't it I don't know. I'm just going on right now. So there you go. That is my day so far. I'm going to edit this and get it onto YouTube before I start feeling any kind of fatigue. So thank you for, for watching you guys.